Panadent Corporation presents our line of modular articulator systems. Shown here is the basic articulator system, consisting of the carrying case, model SL articulator with 1.5 millimeter motion analogs, Panamount face bow assembly, videotape, and instruction manual. A hex wrench for adjusting the articulator and face bow, mounting block, and panabite trays. The Panamount face bow components include the bite fork, the hex wrench, nasion relator, face bow frames, stem assembly, and mounting fixture. Arbitrary axis face bow transfer procedures. Lock nasion relator to crossbar of face bow with thumb screw. Insert and lock bite fork attachment posts to crossbar of face bow. Sure, double toggle clamp is loose with hex wrench. Loosen single toggle clamp with hex wrench. Compound and tripod arrangement on both sides of warm, dry bite fork. Water, place bite fork in patient's mouth with stem on right side and pointing straight forward. Position fork so that midline mark on fork corresponds with midline of maxilla. Place mandible in retreated position. Instruct patient to close teeth with light pressure into soft compound and then open mouth immediately. Remove bite fork and harden compound outside mouth. Harden compound with cold wa tap water or compressed air. Cut back excess compound with sharp barred Parker knife, leaving no more than one millimeter impressions of teeth. Also cut back distal extension edentulous areas, leaving only area of ridge with dense attached gingiva. Next, place small amount of conogenol bite registration paste on three compound pads of maxillary side only. Include distal extension edentulous areas. Reposition bite fork in patient's mouth and have patient close teeth to support fork until paste hardens. We are now ready to attach the face bow to the bite fork and I instruct the patient to reach up and grab the, the side arms and hold them beside the face while I slowly come in to attach the toggle to the protruding stem. Once I get it over the stem, the patient can now put the earplugs deeply into the ear, into the external auditory canal. The next step is to lock the large screw at the front of the face bowl. Next, loosen the screw that locks the nasion relator and we like to push back on this end of the stem slightly against the nasion so it is firm against the nasion then lock this screw. The next step then is to make sure the toggles are loose. In other words we don't want any binding in the toggles. The vertical height of the face bow has now been adjusted to the nasion and the next step is to grasp the toggles very tightly like this to offset the torque while we now tighten this vertical screw on the double toggle. And we must tighten it very firmly, keep
keep a good grasp, a grasp on the toggles and then tighten the single toggle like this. Next is to release the nasion. Next step is to release the large lock screw and have the patient retract the earplugs and then the patient is instructed to open the mouth. We take the face bowl away. Immediately we loosen the set screw or the lock screw that holds the bite fork assembly. The bite fork assembly is removed and the bite fork assembly can now be sent to the laboratory for mounting the maxillary cast on the articulator. The items used for the mandibular positional records, that is the centric check bite and the protrusive check bite, are shown here. The quick drying impression tray adhesive by Kerr or Empergum with the application brush inside. Baby oil by Johnson & Johnson. Bowl of cold water. Alcohol torch. Matches. Panadent bite trays. Soft toothbrush compound stick, leaf gauge, four inch scissors, rubber wheel on mandrel, articulating ribbon and holder, ziplock plastic storage bags for bike trays, cotton roll, two by two gauze pads, sharp Bard Parker scalpel, Nogenol bite registration paste by Co. Mixing pad and cement spatula. After removing Panabite trays from package, it is recommended that each tray be sanitized in cold sterilizing solution prior to patient use. If maxillary cast of patient's teeth is available, place cast on bite tray with incisors against anterior flange. Cut off extended portion of tray distal to the second molars. Tray should cover first and second molars and distal extension edentulous areas. If the casts of the patient are not available, we then have to try the tray in the patient's mouth to determine the length, cut it off in the same manner that we just did. After the tray has been cut off, we take our slow speed handpiece with a rubber abrasive wheel and polish the distal sharp edges if any exist. Following that, we can go directly to the mouth. We grip the tray right here at these small serrated areas on either side of the tray, place it into the patient's mouth, and bring this flange against the maxillary teeth to the midline mark. Bring the fingers, the index fingers, to the side of the tray and have the patient crush the tray as hard as possible to conform to the teeth. Bite as hard as you can, please. Open, please. We now take the second one for our protrusive record, place it between the teeth, align the midline of the flange of the tray with the midline of the patient's mouth, move our fingers to the bicuspid areas, 
have the patient bite together as hard as they can and crush the tray to conform to their teeth. Open, please. After the patient has uh, conformed the trays to the occlusion of the mouth, we must dry the trays on both sides very thoroughly with compressed air. We must put an adhesive on the tray, and in this case we're using Ampergam adhesive. Grasp the tray in the palatal area and paint the perforated areas of the tray with a light coat of the adhesive on both sides of the tray. This is a mixture of clonogenol. We paint, place a very thin layer over the maxillary side only, about one to two millimeters thick. If any of it oozes through the holes on the opposite side, we take our gauze pads and wipe it off. Then we take it to the patient's mouth. Place it gently between the teeth and have the patient then bite together, tap your teeth together, open slightly. And we hold it over the bicuspid areas very gently against the maxillary teeth with the patient's mouth slightly separating the teeth. Important that the patient does not bite on the tray while we are taking the registration of the maxillary teeth because they might intrude some of the teeth or flex the tray. It must be held in a passive manner. After the nogenol has hardened, we must remove the tray and it is important to put the index, the index fingers against the lower surface of the tray, bring the thumbs in and catch the tray right at the bicuspid areas and then shake the tray a little like this and then slowly remove it from the mouth. First record out of the mouth, and we now have the second record, which will be the protrusive record, and it is exactly like the centric. We have to put about one to two millimeters of conogenol on the superior side. If any oozes through the bottom, we can wipe that off. And uh, you can take this away now, please. We'll take this to the mouth of the patient, put it between the teeth. Bring the midline to the mid, uh, of the tray to the mouth. Midline, bite your teeth together, tap up and down on them. Slightly open your mouth. And we have, all right, we put our fingers, our index fingers, under the lower part of the tray, bring our thumbs here over the bicuspids, shake it real good so we are supporting the tray as we break it loose from the teeth. The next step is to take a sharp Bard Parker scalpel and trim off the excess material that may be impinging on the tissues or that is going to prevent the teeth from seeding all the way.
use of a soft toothbrush for cleaning the excess particles or compressed air is the ideal way for cleaning the particles that cling to the ZOE. We now take the trays to the patient's mouth and have a final try-in for fit to make sure that they have not warped. And we look in the molar areas to make sure that it is seated properly and on both sides they must be seated and the anterior portion must be solid against the maxillary teeth. If the trays are warped, we must reline them, but they must fit perfectly to the patient's teeth. There can be no flexion in the tray. To do our centric record, we take one of the trays and the compound heat about three centimeters of the compound extremely hot, that is smoking hot. We like to put a large amount of compound on. That way we don't run the risk of it coming off so readily. And the tray was dry, so the compound will stick. So we have a good two centimeter square area. The next step is to temper the hot compound in the warm water before we put it in the patient's mouth. We now go to the patient and fit the tray over the mac.